Hurricane Hillary has brought flooding, high winds and at least one death to Mexico's Baja California. It's quickly advancing north towards heavily populated southwestern states in the U.S. Authorities there warn of potentially life-threatening flooding. Hurricane Hillary lashing the Cabo San Lucas resort town in Mexico. With the eye of the storm approaching the coast, winds of 177 kilometers per hour and heavy rainfall are already bearing down on Mexico's Baja California Peninsula. In Mexico's second largest city, Tijuana, the city council has set up shelters. If your house is in a landslide zone, I want to tell you again that together with the city councils, the state government has installed shelters across Baja California, and we are ready to receive you. And authorities there are taking precautions to prevent flood damage. Builders are digging channels to allow the flood water to drain. Meteorologists say the storm is losing strength as it heads towards the U.S. state of California. But it's gaining speed, and the U.S. National Hurricane Center is warning of catastrophic flooding. There will be power outages, make no mistake. There will be power outages across Southern California. And we want to be sure that we have this close communication with those utility companies to ensure that they can restore power as quickly as they possibly can. As California braces for disruption, authorities are telling people to stay home. Jason Campadonia is NBC News Radio bureau chief in LA. Does California know how to prepare for a tropical storm? So the short answer there, Ben, is no. No, we do not. Uh, the last time a tropical storm made landfall here in Southern California was almost eight decades ago. And that was even before they were naming tropical storms or naming hurricanes. And with the amount of rain that is going to fall in such a short amount of time, uh, California is a desert and our terrain is not ready to absorb all of that water all at once. So we have been asked by officials to gas up your car, make sure that you have important documents ready to go. If you are indeed evacuated, make sure that you have your medications ready. Make sure that you have the kids ready. Make sure that they have food. Make sure that you have food, things like that. And this is very rare for Southern California to deal with. Uh, we're we're the, the sunshine state. We, we have 75 degree weather. Some people make the joke that they air condition the streets out here, that the weather is so perfect. Just, so to have something like this happen in Southern California, it's, uh, it's very, very rare. OK, so hence the um, catastrophic and life-threatening flood warning. Some areas expecting a year's rain in only a few days. What is this sparking a mass exodus? Are people packing up and leaving? Not at the moment. I wouldn't call it a mass exodus, but I will say that there are evacuation orders in San Bernardino County, which is just north of San Diego. Uh, and just south of Los Angeles County. Uh, that's a very rural but mountainous area. And in those areas, they're expected to get 10 inches of rain. And out there, it's very, very low-lying land. So all of that, all of the rocks, all of the debris, all of the bush that has been accumulated over the past I mean, several years uh, will now be potentially washed away. And that's what everybody's afraid of. So you're sitting at home, and next thing you know, the entire mountain will slide off the slope. And that debris will then hit streets, and that debris will hit more densely populated areas as it gets further down to the lower line areas. So there are some evacuation orders in place right now, but people are not set to panic. The tropical storm isn't going to hit for a few hours here and it'll be rain and then it'll be more rain and then it'll be a lot of rain really really fast uh, going into the work week jason we're seeing a summer of climate extremes has that intensified the debate about climate change in the u.s so the debate of climate change is always going to be a hot a hot topic right you you go to your friend's house for a party or to watch the ball game 
And that is definitely something that's going to come up. You know, wow, I can't believe how hot it is, or I can't believe how much snow we've had, things like that. And it really depends on who you are and what side of the aisle you fall on, which studies you believe. We've, we've seen studies on both sides of this. Climate change doesn't affect things. Climate change does affect things. And so it really depends on where you believe your beliefs stay politically. If you're conservative, then climate change isn't doing uh, very much when it comes to extremes. But if you're more on the liberal side, then climate change is definitely causing all of these extremes. We just finished a mass winter and we had more rainfall and more snow than we've had in decades. And now we're having a tropical storm and they're expecting the temperatures now after the tropical storm to rise through Southern California. And with all the vegetation, the wildfire season has, is going to begin. So it really is just kind of bracing for impact right now. I never knew the, uh, the politics could have such an impact on the weather. Jason Cappadonia, thank you very much for joining us from NBC News in Los Angeles. Thank you.